All right, guys, update here on the uh, 89 Corvette. Uh, what I did uh, for the valve to set these valves uh, adjustment, rocker arm adjustment, um, what I started out with is, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, down here on that, uh, down here on the uh, crank pulley, I put a little white mark on that, and then uh, I started out straight up and down, and then I went and adjusted the uh, I adjusted these rocker arms until I got all the slack out of the uh, the push rod, moving it up and down, get that slack out of there, then turn, then rotate the. Uh, Rotate the motor uh, 90 degrees, and the uh, way I found the best way to do that was uh, I had this I had this here out of the way, and what I did is I put this uh, I put this ratchet here on my belt tightener because when I was trying to turn it, what I was doing was turning the motor with the uh, over there on the alternator on the alternator nut. So it made it a whole lot easier. But I noticed uh, when I was doing that, uh, my belt was slipping a little bit. So what I did is I took this other, uh, took the other ratchet, and I hooked it up to the uh, belt, the belt tensioner pulley there. And then uh, since I was doing this by myself, I didn't have anybody hold this tight. So that way, it tightened that belt up. So this thing wasn't uh, slipping on me, so I could turn the motor over. Plus, I had all the spark plugs out of it too. So what I did is I took and tied this off right here, right in here. I took a tie strap and tightened that down, so this was drawn tight. That way, I could do it myself, and then uh, that way I could turn the motor over uh, a lot easier up there than trying to do it down there on the on the uh, crank itself. So once I got that, I did uh, another 90 or another 90, which would have put the mark all the way to the bottom of the pulley there. I went through all 16, <coughs> all 16 valves and push rods, and just kept tightening them down until it took all this up and down movement <coughs> out of the push rods. Then I cranked it another 90, so the mark was over here on this side then. Went through them again, because they'll, they'll loosen up each time you turn that. <clears throat> and what you, what you need to do is uh, rotate that motor uh, two times. I actually did it four times, just to make sure <clears throat> that everything was, all the slack was out of the push rods. Uh, do all 16 of them like that. And that gave me a a real good start of where everything needed to be. And when I did that, after I got all that done, I rotated that motor like four times to make sure all the slack was out, so you had zero lash in the uh, in the push rod there in the valve. <coughs> Once I did that, then I went through all 16 of them and and turned one half turn on my uh, I had a ratchet on here and all I did was I turned tightened that nut one half turn <clears throat> and then I had uh, had everything back together and when I fired it up I had a few of these a few of the lifters were uh, ticking so I think the problem was that I probably should have went one full turn instead of a half a turn. I think if I went one full turn, I'd have been all right. I wouldn't have had to take the uh, valve covers back off. And what I was doing now, um, I started up the motor and went through them and made sure. Uh, and then I adjusted them with the motor running. And I had this here piece of cardboard on here to keep the oil from splicing. It won't splice unless you rev it up. If you, if you rev it quite a bit, then you're going to get some splicing on your oil. But if you just let it sit there and idle, 
uh, you can do it this way too. But uh, that was a good base start the way I did it. I uh, seen on uh, another a couple more YouTube videos where a guy just turned the crank 90 degrees each time until he got the slack out of the push rods. And then uh, once he did that, he did, uh, I think most of them were doing three quarter turn on their, uh, on the, on these uh, rocker nuts. They were turning uh, three quarter. And I did, uh, when I did it, I did a half turn because I didn't want to, <clears> that was my first time doing it. So I didn't want to mess anything up. <clears throat> and then once I did start it up, I did have a couple on that side that were ticking a little bit, and then I had, uh, I think these two here were ticking a little bit. But like I said, I think if I had to win a full turn instead of a half turn, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't, have, to, wouldn't have had to take the uh, valve covers back off and adjust these, uh, adjust the uh, rocker arms with the motor running, get that ticking noise out of, out of the lifters. So, um, I just want to give an update on what's going on on that, so anybody else trying to do that, that's a good way to, you know, get your base, and then if you do have some ticking noise, uh, you'll probably have to pull your, it's quite a bit of a job getting this valve cover off on this side, you got to pull this pipe off, the EGR pipe's got to come off, and then you got to hook this back up if you do it this way, and you also got to pull this, uh, I had to pull the the uh, AC uh, compressor. I had to take it off. You got two nuts, two bolts down there. You got to take out two bolts up here. You got to take out. You got to loosen this bracket up. There's a bracket that holds right here. Take that. You don't need to take it all the way off. Just loosen it. And then this bracket here. I had to take this piece off here, part of the EGR system. I had to take that off. And then this bracket right here. I think there's. Uh, there's two bolts, yeah, two bolts on that and two nuts on there. You gotta loosen them up. You don't need to take it all the way off. Just loosen them up enough to where you can slide that bracket over a little bit. Because uh, the problem I had, I couldn't get my uh, valve cover on this side. I couldn't get it off because of this uh, this bracket being on here. So uh, just a heads up on that if you're gonna do it. If you gotta do it that way, but I think uh, I think if a guy would just uh, do probably uh, after you get the uh, uh, push rod, get your uh, up and down moving out of the push rod. I think if a guy would do a full one turn on them, you probably wouldn't have to do. You wouldn't have to take the uh, valve covers off. What I did is I did a half turn, and I had a couple. Uh, I think there was two on that side and two on this side that were making a little bit of a ticking noise. So I went ahead and pulled the uh, the valve cover. I already got those. On that side, done. In this side here, I'm getting ready to uh, adjust these two right here because I uh, got. I know this one's making a little ticking noise here, so I got to do a little adjusting on that. And uh, <coughs> uh, you need to do that too. If you're going to do it with the motor running, you need to have that motor warmed up up to temperature before you adjust those like that. So, so that's what I got going on. On the 89 Corvette right here, just wanted to throw that video out there, uh, let some people know uh, when they're trying to do this uh, uh, valve or do their uh, valve stem seals and stuff themselves, and then readjust the valves. Uh, uh, give you a little heads up on uh, on uh, basic ideas of what you got to do there to to get the job done. So, all right, guys, that'll wrap it up on this video. Thank you.